Suicide Squad Isekai episode 8. So we're just going to jump right into this. So we start off this episode where the last episode kind of ended. Where the squad has taken out the thinker. They've destroyed the fortress that he built. And they freed all the elves. And so they're on their way back to the kingdom in good spirits. And that's when we cut to the kingdom where we see the queen and her subjects watching all of this. And they're kind of discussing what to do with the squad. One of them believes that the squad should be punished because they disobeyed the queen's orders by breaking out of the prison. Meanwhile, the other one's like, well, even though they did that, they did help us. They delivered a fantastic blow to the empire. And so maybe we should give them a break. And that's when the queen calls one of her subjects and says, hey, you're loyal to me, right? He's like, yeah. She's like, all right, I have a plan for you. We cut to the squad making their way uh, into the kingdom to meet the queen. And this is where I'm just like, why are they back in the kingdom again? I wish this series would address this because this has been bugging the hell out of me. They keep going back to the kingdom and it doesn't make any sense. Literally, the last time they went back to the kingdom, they were thrown in jail and they were subject to be executed and they had to break out of prison with the help of Cecil and the princess. And now they're going back to the kingdom again. They do say something like, well, you know, we help stop the thinker and free the elves, so maybe they'll be easier on us. But still, like every time you go back to the kingdom, nothing good ever happens. You, get, you immediately get thrown back into prison, and the last time you were subject to execution. This is the thing that really just annoys the hell out of me, and I don't think the series does a very good job of addressing it. There is, like again, like the throwaway line that they have, but it's not enough. I want them to really explain why do we keep going back to the prison. In fact, I would have liked it if we had a scene where they're discussing what their next plan is and Harley is like, well, we can't go back to the kingdom because we just broke out of there. So uh, what are we going to do next? Maybe Rick Flagg is the one that's like, well, even though they uh, were going to execute us, we did help defeat the thinker. We did help free the elves. Maybe they can take the leader of the elves with them and say, hey, like, why don't we go to the kingdom and we can address the queen. We can explain everything that happened, what we did. And now we have the elven army on her side. And maybe they'll let us work with her. Because that's what Amanda Waller wants us to do. She wants us to help the kingdom win this war. That could kind of explain it. Or even just something as simple as the gate that rearms their bomb is literally right above the kingdom. And so they have to literally be inside the kingdom for the bombs to get reset. I mean, you already ruin that because you have the gate somewhere else. So we can't do that anymore. But if you had done that from the beginning where the other gates, like the signal is the strongest in the kingdom. And so we have to be in the castle itself for the bombs to get rearmed. That will totally explain why they have to keep going back to the castle. And, you know, it can be like, oh, well, it's easier to try to make peace with the queen rather than constantly trying to break into the castle so that we can reset the bomb. You could have done something like that. But instead, no, the signal is somewhere else. Instead, you just go back to the castle as if you didn't just break out, as if the queen didn't just ask for your execution. Like, none of this makes any sense to me. Yeah, they show up to the uh, castle. They are meeting with the queen. And that's when one of her subjects addresses them and basically talks them down. Uh, he basically says that, uh, yeah, you, you killed a thinker, but he's one of your men. Like, he came from your world. It's almost like he's putting on, I don't want to say he's putting on an act, but it basically, it seems like he's being ordered to dress them down, to dress down the squad, and to try to piss them off. I mean, it's heavily implied that that's what the queen was kind of ordering him to do. And so that's what he does. He, he basically dresses them down, kind of starts pissing them off. He, he kind of like taps King Shark in the face. And calls him like a, a dumb idiot. When Harley calls him out on that, he makes fun of her makeup and then slaps her in the face. And that just pisses everybody off, especially King Shark. King Shark literally grabs the guy and eats him. And Cecil goes to uh, throw his sword at King Shark, and King Shark eats the sword. And then Cecil's gonna use the recall ability to rip the sword out of King Shark's stomach. And Deadshot puts a gun to his head and says, I know what you're going to do. If you do it, I'm going to kill you. And so we get a standoff where um, the squad is kind of getting tired of all the mistreatment and basically saying, hey, if you do anything, we're going to kill you. So the queen pretty much says, you know, for what you guys did, I should have you executed. But since you took out the thinker, destroyed the fortress that he built and freed the elves, 
Instead, you will be exiled, but King Shark will be executed. And so uh, she uses her magic to wrap up King Shark, and the guards take him away, and they're going to execute him. The Suicide Squad is like leaving the castle. The princess goes to stop them and apologizes. And Harley basically rips into her about how I'm getting sick and tired of you constantly apologizing. You don't do anything. You don't have a backbone whatsoever. You don't speak up to your mom. You're, you're not doing anything to defend us in the open. All you do is apologize. We get constantly mistreated and you just come over and apologize. And you don't do anything else. I'm really sick and tired of your act. And um, she walks away. And the rest of the squad followers after her. And yeah, the princess is dejected. But I, I think this was good for Harley to rip into her. Because she's right. The princess has really done nothing. Other than helping them break out in the last episode. But even then, it's like you did that in secret. You have not spoken out against your mom. Uh, or anything like that. You, you've done nothing really to help your own people. And uh, that's when we just get the squad at a pub just getting drunk. Yeah, Deadshot is basically completely wasted. We have Clayface, who is trying to impress two bar wenches. And we have a moment where um, he reenacts the death scene from Terminator 2, where, uh, you know, Arnold like sinks into the lava and then he gives a thumbs up. So Clayface does that, complete with singing the theme song as he does a thumbs up. And the uh, wenches are just like, oh, that was interesting. And Clayface is upset. Like, that was the most emotional scene in one of the greatest movies ever. And, of course, they're like, what's a movie? Like, they have no idea what he's talking about. Uh, meanwhile, we have Peacemaker. He's just chugging down drinks. And Rick Flagg tries to stop him. And he's like, hey, like, I, I can't get drunk. Uh, you know, I just blink out my mind and open my eyes to the peace at the bottom of a bottle. Harley comes in. She's pounding down drinks as well. She's basically talking about... She asks Rick Flagg if he has a lover. And then she says that she does. And, you know, her lover is the best ever. Uh, basically talking about the Joker. About how the Joker said that everybody wants to find a new world that's different from this one. And show who they truly are. And how smart he is that, you know, he called this whole isekai thing. Kind of just drunk and rambling. And then that's when we have this weird bard show up. And he starts singing a song about the heroes, about the Suicide Squad. And I thought, like, there was going to be something more to this. Just because of how flamboyantly dressed he is. Like, he completely stands out from everybody else in the crowd. Yeah, I was thinking, okay, maybe this is someone in disguise. Maybe his singing is going to put a spell on people. But no, he's just a regular bard singing a song about the Suicide Squad. But other than Clayface, it just pisses everybody else off. Like, right now, they're at the, their worst. They're just drowning their sorrows in the bottom of a bottle. The last thing they want to hear is about how great they were for the kingdom when the kingdom just literally kicked them out and is planning on executing one of their fellow squad mates. And so <laughs> we basically just get an all-out brawl where Clayface and Deadshot start shooting at each other. Uh, eventually, it gets to the point where Peacemaker gets into the fray. So it's kind of funny because we only see Peacemaker from like the waist up this entire time. But when he starts getting into the fight, he's completely pantless and his like junk is just flapping out <laughs> in the open for everyone to see. Of course, it's censored. But yeah, I just find the fact that Peacemaker was drinking alcohol while naked from the waist down the entire time was just kind of hilarious. And now puts into perspective why Wick Flag was telling him like, hey, maybe, uh, maybe you should stop drinking. It's because, yeah, he had his pants off. He starts getting involved in the fight. Uh, at one point, Harley chucks something at Peacemaker's head. And Peacemaker asks who did that. And Harley points at Clayface. And we just, everyone just starts fighting each other. So they wake up the next morning, uh, all hung over. And they decide, you know what, let's just leave. Let's go rescue King Shark and then let's get the hell out of here. Like, we failed our mission. We're not going to be able to make a good relationship with the kingdom. I mean, they just exiled us and they're going to kill one of our groups. So, yeah, our, our mission is basically total. So let's leave. And so the squad leaves and Harley leaves behind her baby dragon because she realizes that if she takes the dragon to the other world with her, the dragon is most likely going to get like dissected or thrown into prison with her. And that's not the kind of life she wants for it. And also the fact that it seems like the baby dragon has made friends with another animal. So, yeah, let's just leave the baby dragon with this with his friend so he doesn't have to come with us. And uh, they basically make their way towards the gate so that their bombs can be reset. 
and then they're going to go try to save King Shark. And then that's when Rick Flagg gets a radio call from Amanda Waller. Basically explains to her about the, the failure of the mission. And Amanda Waller triggers one of the bombs and blows up Clayface's head. So he drops to the floor and everybody is just like standing there. They just watch their friend die and they, they're freaking out. It's kind of interesting the fact that uh, the Suicide Squad seems to actually like care about each other in this. It's not just a bunch of like villains forced to work together. I mean, that's how it was at first, but it seems like there's actually been like a bond formed between them. And so when they see one of their fellow comrades get his head blown off, they actually like freak out about it. Not just for their own safety, but also for the fact that, hey, one of our buddies just got killed in front of us. Harley calls her out on that. Like basically like go ahead and just kill us. But just know that karma is going to come back to bite you in the ass. And before Amanda Waller can activate one of the other bombs, uh, Rick Flagg notices something. He notices that it looks like the Empire is making their move. There seems to be a giant battle going down at the kingdom. and Or at least a giant battle about to happen down at the kingdom. And he basically asks, hey, why don't you give us one more chance? Let us go fight in this battle. Let us save the kingdom. And if we do that, we can basically fix the relationship between us and the kingdom, and we will end up completing our mission. And Amanda Waller was like, all right, fine, but now you only got 24 hours to complete this mission. And so that's when Clayface pops up and basically explains that uh, he's fine, because since he's made out of clay, he's able to move like the most vulnerable body parts wherever he wants. Like he can move like his heart and his brain to other parts of his body so that when his head blows up, it doesn't contain his brain. So then he can just morph it back again and then move his brain back into his head. So yeah, Clayface is completely fine. The bomb doesn't really do anything to him. And so everyone's like, well, then why were you constantly freaking out about the bomb? Why, why did you bother coming on this journey with us? And he's like, well, every Isekai adventure needs to have its protagonist. So yeah. He's once again just very fixated on becoming the protagonist of this isekai adventure. So, uh, yeah, Rick Flagg's like, well, we got 24 hours. It's going to take us a while to get back to the castle, so let's haul ass. And there also seems to be a little something where it's kind of hinted at that Amanda Waller can't send a signal to the bombs unless they're at the gate, which makes me believe that if the squad is away from the gate and the timer goes off, the bombs won't go off. Because there's nothing there to trigger the bomb. It's just if they're near the gate. If they're near the gate, if they're near an area where Amanda Waller has like her signal, like her signal from her world can reach this world, then bombs can get triggered or they can get reset depending on whichever one she wants to do. But as long as if they're away from that signal, the bombs are basically just duds. That's just my interpretation of just some of the hints that we're getting, but it's not like straight up told to us yet. So we'll see how this plays out in the future. But yeah, I'm starting to believe that maybe the bombs are duds as long as if they're outside the signal area. And then we get a final scene where the princess goes to confront her mom and she goes into her mother's room and she sees that painting of her mother holding her as a baby has been like ripped to shreds. And her mom is just like, mumbling un under her breath to herself and she seems to be very pissed off and as she walks by a mirror instead of seeing her mom's reflection she sees the reflection of some kind of demonic entity so this could kind of explain why the mom is such a see you next tuesday is that she's being possessed by something maybe by the empress herself we don't know but it could seem to explain why the kingdom at least seems to be making really poor decisions when it comes to this war. Then again, if this were to happen, it would have to have happened a long time ago because even when the princess was a child, the mom was very mean and kind of like aggressive and kind of acting the way she is now. Like it's not like this has been a sudden change in her personality. This is something that we've seen from the queen even when the princess was a young child. If they just come up and tell us, oh yeah, the queen flipped personalities uh, when the original squad showed up to this world, I won't buy that because we've seen the queen act in this way before that, years before that. So I'm guessing that she's been possessed since a very long time. I guess we'll find out in future episodes. But yeah, basically there's something going down with the queen. And that's how the episode ends. Yeah, I thought this was a, a good uh, episode. 
Uh, I think the previous one was better just because we had like cool fight scenes and stuff. This one, the visuals kind of took a dip in quality. Like the quality wasn't as good as previous episodes. Uh, we also didn't really, yeah, we didn't really get like, much fight scenes other than like the pub drunken brawl. Other than that, we didn't really get any fight scenes. And even then, that was not really a, so much as a fight scene as it was just kind of a comedy gag. It was just like the squad throwing clay, shooting bullets at each other. And uh, most of the brawl happens uh, off screen. Like, right when the brawl is about to start, we'll cut to like an exterior shot of the pub and we just hear noises and stuff. And so we don't really get to see much of the actual fight itself. This was just more of like a, a talk heavy episode with a lot more comedic gags as well as just like the whole drama of King Shark being taken prisoner and about to be executed and the squad being exiled and realizing that their mission is over and uh, yeah, how they're going to fix this mess. It was just more of like that kind of stuff, like that kind of drama mixed with a lot of comedy. So this was a dramedy <laughs> with not much action, but uh, yeah, we got some interesting things being progressed. Uh, the fact that the bomb timer is lower, the fact that the queen is possessed, uh, is the princess going to stand up to herself? Is she going to end up getting caught in the next episode? And now they have to free her as well. I guess we're going to see how things play out. All in all, enjoyable episode, enjoyable series so far. And there you go. Hope you enjoyed. And I hope to see you next time. Take care. Later. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, I still want to thank you for watching it this far. And I hope the next one is more to your liking. With that said, thank you once again. And I hope you guys and gals have a good one. Later.